before us on the table uh, down here where we usually see a cup filled with the symbol of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Tonight the chalice is filled with the remains of the triumphant entry and the silent choruses of the hosannas that rang out last spring. Tonight the symbol of hope and the emblems of love take a different form, the form of ashes. The ashes come from the palms of a year gone by and represent our good intentions and our unfulfilled promises of transformation. We come tonight to receive an outward sign of the disfigurement that our transgressions have left upon our world, upon one another, and upon the kingdom of God. So tonight, we come and we worship in spirit and in truth that our lives and our living might be changed to reflect the teachings of the Christ. As we begin our time of worship, you are invited to reflect upon what you might offer in service to the crucified Christ. Let us take a moment of silence before we sing. transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. <clears throat> Against you, you alone have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being, therefore teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, that I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit then I will teach transgressors your ways, 
and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise, for you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Do good to Zion in your pleasure. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings and in whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. The word of the Lord for the people of God. Ash Wednesday is kind of a solemn day. And we've had some excitement around here. <laughs> but today starts Lent, a, a word which derived meaning about the lengthening of time from winter into spring. But more than this, it's a time each year when we focus, really focus on the path Christ Jesus laid out for us to follow, to be true to Christ's word, true to his calling, and true to the faith and hope and life we share with him. But you know, sometimes it's hard to focus on spring when winter just won't give up. <laughs> I mean, we had to cancel last Wednesday and last Sunday because of winter weather. Luckily, the last couple of days have been a little better. I actually saw sun in the sky. <laughs> and warmer weather seems to be on the horizon. <coughs> but while we're beginning to look forward to spring, we still have to live in the reality that winter is not over yet. We may yet have ice or fluffy white snowflakes from the Lord's heavenly storehouses coming down for us. <laughs> snow, you know, the Bible talks about snow a lot, likening it to that which is pure and clean and righteous. Truly, the crystal formations of snowflakes are beautiful. If you've ever got to see them under a microscope or something, they're all many shapes and sizes and Everyone is unique. I remember when we were kids, we used to make the snowflakes when cutting them up. And it didn't matter how many times you did it, they never came out the same twice. But despite their uniqueness, snowflakes have one thing in common. You know what it is? They're dirty hearts. Oddly enough, snowflakes start as a tiny dust particle which serves as the nucleus of the snowflake. And like snowflakes, we've been beautifully created by God, the greatest of God's creation, it said. God's pride and joy, but like snowflakes, we're created uniquely. But we too have that little bit of dirt inside. We're all marked by imperfection. We all run away from God. We all have sin in our lives. But in this season of Lent, we remember that through Christ Jesus, the dirt at the core of our being is made clean. <clears throat> There's a part of the scripture that I didn't read earlier, and it's the heading above the psalm. It says, For the director of music, a psalm of David, when the prophet Nathan came to him after David had committed adultery with Bathsheba. Ouch! They put that in the Bible? It seems a little direct, putting a heading of the song, and this is a song used in temple worship. But it says right there. Why can't we just put that part off to the side? Why do we have to rehash that? Why can't it just be this beautiful prayer that people can recite and say, yes, I feel just like that. David's 
sin is recorded in 2 Samuel for everybody to read. And on top of that, it is also included in the worship section of the Hebrew Bible. A constant reminder of what David had done. Yet the Bible calls David a man after God's own heart. Now we know he committed sins, but he didn't commit just little sins. He broke big commandments. He coveted, he had an affair, and then he tried to cover it up. When that went wrong, he murdered the guy. All this took a little time, and he thought he'd gotten away with it. A man after God's own heart? Doesn't sound like it. David planned his sins, and he acted on those plans, and he was comfortable with where he was. Psalm 51 only contains a public exposure of a great man's sins, but it's a documentation of that man's feelings and a prayer about the situation of knowing what he had done. David poured out his heart to God. He knows that he was caught in his sins and in this prayer admits that his sins are always there and that he can't fix them and he can't hide them. He prayed his plea to God that he wants to be made right. He knows that the only way it can happen is for God to wipe the slate clean and tonight we begin Lent. Forty days. Forty days plus six Sundays. Of us reflecting on our lives. Reflecting on what we have done. How we've treated other people. Even those of us that try the hardest not to treat other people badly, have those times in our lives when we do. So we commit ourselves to this process of allowing the Holy Spirit to show us that we are more like David in our pride and our arrogance than we would like to admit. Tonight we are committing to a journey that begins in the low light of the evening and goes into the blackness of Good Friday with the knowledge that light, with a capital L, is just down the road. The light of Easter. But before we can get to the light, we have to follow Jesus through the darkness. Lent is a time to reflect. Reflect of, about who we really are at the core. During this Lenten journey, we're going to be talking about characters of the cross and looking at how Jesus dealt with people in different ways and how those people saw the light in Christ yet journeyed along with Him. Lent is not a time to be depressed. It is not a time to wallow in our failures. It is a time to free our souls from burdens. I told somebody this week, I gave up stress for Lent. <laughs> <laughs> I gave up a huge stressful thing yesterday. And it's lifted me up. There's still a lot of stress around. Part of it was standing on the corner tonight. But how I deal with that makes a difference. A friend of mine named Andrew Moran, who she wrote on, on the internet today how she was having a horrible day, and I sent her a message telling how much she has meant to me in my ministry. She wrote this beautiful song called Ashes to Ashes. In it, she says, we watch, we wait, we hope, we pray, 
We try to take a path that returns to you. A breath of life. A thirst. A fire. We live our lives to know that we are called by love. Our souls are thirsting for you. We long to see your face, O oh God. Fill us up again. Ashes to ashes, water and rust, we are but dust on the sunbeam. You hold in your hand, you call us by name, and we rise from ashes again. Tonight, we're not going to ask anyone to declare their deepest, darkest secrets to anybody <coughs> except to God. We are suggesting that by receiving the sign of ashes on your forehead, or if you'd rather have them on your hands, that's fine. That you are praying like King David prayed. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Ashes to ashes. Water and rust, we are but dust on a sunbeam. You hold in your hand, you call us by name, and we rise from ashes again. Amen. Let us join in confessing our sins. Holy One. Have mercy. Christ, have mercy. God, have mercy. As disciples slept that night, Christ prayed, seeking forgiveness for the world. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another. We have sinned by our own fault, in thought, in word, and in deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. When the hungry were before him, Jesus fed them. When the naked were presented to him, he clothed them. When the outcasts bravely made their way through the crowd, he welcomed them. When there was injustice, Jesus sought justice. Where there was hatred, he offered love. Where there was bitterness, he offered mercy. Where there was a cross, he offered himself. And when was it, he asked, that you did the same in my name? Holy One, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. God, have mercy. Mark us and remind us that you give us life. You alone sustain us by your breath and your mercy. Holy One, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. God, have mercy. Let us pray together. Gracious God, you created us out of the dust of the earth and breathed into us the breath of life. By your hand we live, and by your hands we return when all our days are done. Grant that the awareness of our mortality may lead us not to fear, but to faith. In our weakness, teach us to look to you for strength. In our failures, to turn to you and find forgiveness, and in our dying, to await the gift of everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As you come forward for ashes this morning, this evening, this evening Julianne is going to sing that song by Andrew Moran. You can come forward and receive the sign. I ask that you can Stay and spend as much time as you want in prayer. Take the outside folder that you have and spend some time praying the prayer stations in the hallway. But go knowing that you are loved and forgiven. Come. We watch. We wait. pray we try to
to take a path that returns to you. Ashes to ashes, water and rust. We are but dust on a sunbeam. You hold. And we rise from ashes again. A breath of life, a thirst. A fire we live our lives to know that we're called by love ashes to ashes. sunbeam you hold in your hand you call us by name and we rise from ashes again my soul is thirsting for you I long to see to ashes, water and rust. We are but dust on a sunbeam. You hold in your hand, you call us by name, and we rise from ashes again.